What is good you guys welcome back in today's video we're going to be talking about and reacting to 247 sports 2023 NBA draft big board y'all seem to love the draft content so make sure you guys give a big thumbs up um, to this video like the video subscribe if you guys are new uh, thank you guys for 150 subs on the road to 200 um, if you guys came from my main channel shout out to you guys um, obviously if you guys don't know I run a channel called the heat report because uh, I'm a heat fan so I mostly talk about the heat but I'm also trying to do NBA and college basketball content um, but yeah if you guys uh, want to join the community make sure you guys subscribe to the channel comment down below what other video ideas you guys have for me I know you guys love the draft content when will my mock draft come out? I would probably say in a couple of weeks, like close to New Year's. I'm, I'm still kind of working on it. Um, I'm trying to do a mock draft. I'm trying to do a big board. I'm trying to do a lottery big board. Like I'm, I'm, I'm working on a lot of videos for you guys. So just stay tuned and they will drop very, very soon. Um, yeah, without further ado, man, let's get right into it. So shout out to 247 Sports for the article. Uh, we're going to start it off right here. Number one overall in the big board, they have Victor Wembanyama. Very, very you know, self-explanatory here. He is the consensus number one prospect and he should be. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that, um, you know, obviously this is a very self-explanatory pick. So I don't really think we have to spend too much time on this. Whoever gets the number one overall pick should take Victor, no matter what they have on their roster. Um, and it's very similar with number two. Scoot Henderson is the clear cut number two prospect. Um, and again, like I said with Victor, whoever has the number two overall pick, I don't care if you have you know the best point guard in nba history on your team scoot henderson is the pick here so um uh yeah so i think that scoot henderson and victor ambayama i mean sorry flip them victor ambayama and scoot henderson um they are the consensus number one and number two overall picks uh then we're going to move on to number three very interested to see who they have here they stick with amen thompson um to be honest he's not this high for me i know a lot of people love him he's very very good obviously very good defender very good slasher uh not the best shooter but um i think he has potential to improve that although this season it has not it, it has not been great so um yeah i i just think that you know the shooting is what concerns me i'm not really a big fan of that at, at the moment like i said it could improve um but I think as of right now, I have a couple of guys, which I'm going to get to as we keep scrolling down. Like, I have a couple of guys over him. I would probably have Amen Thompson, like, number six or number seven, which seems kind of low. I'm not going to lie. But, like, you'll see the players I have over him are legit. So, um, he would probably be, like, six to me. I, I would probably say six. Um, they have a sore Thompson number four. That is... That is very surprising. You know, I don't think Asor Thompson is this high. Um, he's very similar to his brother. Um, and we're, we're like his defense and playmaking is his biggest strength. But his shooting is like his biggest weakness. I would just say his brother's like a lot better at playmaking than he is. Like that's why he has a lot more upside to me because as a point guard, like his playmaking is off the charts. Um, Asor Thompson his shot has definitely looked better than his brothers this season which has is, is impressed me because you know he seems to be kind of molding into a 3 and d wing if he can make his shot a lot more consistent but as of right now i probably wouldn't put him this high um i probably wouldn't even have him like top eight or top like he would probably be like nine or ten for me on my big board so um again it may be nitpicking but I don't think he's this high. Uh, shout out to Osur, though. He's a very good player. Nick Smith Jr. is who I have in my top five. Um, he is he is very electric. I, I'm a huge fan of his game. The reason that I like him like a lot um, and like the reason I like him more than Amen and Osur Thompson is because he's he's a combo guard. He can play both on and off the ball. Um, I, I think that Osur is very, I mean, sorry, not Amen is very good on the ball, but off the ball, there are concerns there. Uh, Nick Smith is a lot more comfortable playing off the ball. As we're seeing with Arkansas, he's playing with Anthony Black. Like, he's capable of doing a lot more things offensively, in my opinion. Of course, Amen Thompson has the size advantage, um, but as far as a shot maker, a playmaker, like, I don't think there's much gap in playmaking between the two. He's very, you know, he's not as athletic as, you know, um, Amen Thompson. So, like, he doesn't really have, like, the like the bounce or like the hops because he's not as big he's not as tall he's not as long but he still competes he still plays really good defense for his size 
um, and he can get to the rim at ease. So he's not the most athletic, but I'm a huge fan of his game and his competitiveness. He is probably my number three or number four. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of flip-flopping between him and another player who we'll get to probably. But um, yeah, Nick Smith at five. Um, I have him in my top five for sure. Gigi Jackson. I love Gigi Jackson, man. He is probably like my second favorite player. Uh, he's definitely like in my top three of favorites as far as like, you know, guys that I've like really liked. Uh, just because like I've watched him, like I, I remember like his, the, the decommission. Is that even a word? Decommission? Decommitting from uh, UNC to go to USC. Um, and uh, I just think he's, he can do it all, man. He's very versatile. Uh, I love Gigi Jackson, man. He, his potential is through the roof. He's the youngest player in the draft. Sky's the limit for sure. Uh, Swiss Army knife. Brandon Miller is who I have kind of debating like i'm kind of flip-flopping him and nick smith jr for like my three and four spot right now um i love brandon miller's game he's very smooth and versatile he's long he's athletic he can make shots like difficult shots uh, he's very similar to paul george man i see a lot of pg he's wearing 24 in this picture um i, I like i love the paul george comp I, I think that the paul george comp is real I think he has that type of potential, man. Um, very big fan of his game. Um, Cam Whitmore. Cam Whitmore is also definitely up there. He has not played, uh, you know, too much. He's only played a couple of games, but he looked really good in the last game that he played. I think he had like a dub. Uh, I don't know who they played against, but he had he had a 20 piece. So I think he had a pretty good game um, coming off that thumb injury, but he looks good. Um, you know, I'm kind of debating between him and um, Amen Thompson for like the six spot. That's why I didn't know if Amen was six or seven. Um, so yeah, I, again, I'm not trying to spoil my big board too much, but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of where I would have them. Um, Kaysen Wallace, I like Kaysen Wallace a lot. I think he competes, you know, very, very well on the defensive end. And I think his offense is kind of under the radar just because a lot of people know him as like such a good defender. People don't really give him credit offensively, but I think his offense has improved a lot. And um, he's starting to become like a factor offensively as well. So like, I think his two-way potential is through the loop, through, through the roof, very similar to like a Davion Mitchell coming out of Baylor, or like a Marcus Smart. Um, I really like Kaysa Wallace, man. I think he's the best guard defender, maybe the best perimeter defender in this draft class. Um, so shout out to Kaysa Wallace. Keontae George, I'm waiting for one name that has not popped up. Keontae George is not that name, but Keontae George is definitely in my top 10 as far as like, you know, um, a draft board. Like he is very skilled. Um, again, like he's a microwave guy. He can score really well. Um, he can score at three levels. Probably the best like flat out scorer in this draft. Um, playmaking is like okay, but I think he definitely has improved it since last season. Like last season, his playmaking was like, it was like eh, like in high school. But this season, his playmaking has definitely improved a lot. And you can definitely see flashes of him, you know, improving his playmaking. Uh, he's just a shot maker. Like those, those guys always have futures in this league. The guys who can, you know, sc score in bunches. And that's what he is. So um, it's just yet to be seen whether he's like more of a Bradley Beal type player or whether he's more of like a, I don't know, like, like there's difference. There's like different levels to scoring. Like, cause there's, there's a lot of buckets in this league. Like, like Jordan Clarkson's a bucket, um, but, but Bradley Beal is also a bucket, but like, it's just like different levels. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the only like risk with drafting guys like this, like very high. Like, is he going to be like Cam Thomas where Cam Thomas is really, really good. But does Cam Thomas have Bradley Beal potential? Cause that's ultimately where the comparison is. Every time you see like a three level scorer, like they, they always get thrown the black, the Bradley Beal comparison or like the Zach Levine comparison or like any, like Donovan Mitchell, like any, any of those, like, you know, high volume scorers who, who play the shooting guard position. But you also have guys like Jordan Clarkson. You got, you have guys like, you know, like this year, Jaden Hardy was drafted again, yet to be seen where he kind of stacks up Cam Thomas last year. Um, you know, there's a difference between Cam Thomas and Jalen Green. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're both very good scorers. So um, we'll see where Keontae stacks up. Keontae is a very good player, though. He's definitely in my top 10. Uh, this is the player that I was waiting for. Jairus Walker. I, I love Jairus Walker. Um, I think Jairus Walker is the truth, man. I think defensively, he does it all. He's just a winning player, bro. Jairus Walker is just a winning player. He's versatile. He can, um, he can defend. He's starting to stretch the floor. Um, he is such he's such a winning player um i actually think he 
I don't know if this is the best comparison, but he has some Scotty Barnes tendencies in him. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Um, he's not a point guard. Scotty was a point guard like for a while in high school. He doesn't have like the ball handling of Scotty, but as far as you know, the vision, he's not too far. I think his vision is very underrated. Defensively, he can switch. He can basically guard like two through five, maybe even some ones. Um, can rebound, stretching the floor like. He is extremely versatile. I love Jairus Walker. He's a winning player. A lot of teams would love to have him. Um, Anthony Black at 12. Solid, solid. Uh, I probably would have maybe like, I haven't seen Dariq Whitehead here, so I probably would have him higher. But apart from that, like I can't really argue with Anthony Black being top 14. Um, Dylan Mitchell. Wow. Dylan Mitchell is, Dylan. I'm not like super high on Dylan Mitchell. Um, but like i can also get why people love him just because like he's like he impacts the game a lot more than just scoring the ball um but i just think that you know the difference between a guy like him and jairus walker is that jairus walker has shown the ability to score he's shown the ability to facilitate like dylan mitchell is a very versatile player but i don't know if you want to take a guy like that uh top 10 or top 15. um he probably wouldn't be in, in, in my in my top 14. khalil Ware is a very good player i love Khalil Ware. i definitely prefer Khalil Ware over Derek Lively and if that's a debate like you know a lot of people love to have that debate I prefer Khalil Ware um so yeah he can stretch the floor he can protect the rim like his his defense was the big question mark but this season his defense has looked a lot better than expected so shout out to Khalil Ware I'm, I'm still waiting for Whitehead I'm not gonna lie I don't know where Whitehead is to Quavion Smith 15 that seems kind of right Julian Phillips JJ Starling Trayvon Brazil um, Taryn Shannon, shout out to my Illini, man. Taryn Shannon, tough loss today against uh, Penn State, but we'll bounce back. Taryn Shannon looks really good, though. I just had to give my fellow Illini a shout out. Grady Dick, uh, good good pick. Dariq Whitehead's down here at 25. Uh, now, listen, Dariq Whitehead has not been that great this season, but, like, did, did y'all expect Dariq Whitehead to be, like, firing on all cylinders coming off of an injury that has limited his movement for, like, six months? like no like nobody should have he's gonna he's gonna figure it out he's gonna be fine he's just getting his legs underneath him he's getting back into game shape Dariq Whitehead as far as talent is a top 10 prospect in this class there's no reason why he should be down here at 25 um so yeah I don't understand why he's so low uh Marcus Sasser is cool I like Marcus Sasser Arthur Kaluma at 30. all in all this was not a terrible big board by uh, 247 Sports. The only thing that kind of pissed me off was the Dariq Whitehead thing. Like, I don't know how you can have him so low. I understand he probably, you know, he hasn't played much. And when he's played, he hasn't looked great. But as far as talent is concerned, like, there's no way I can see him be this low and be okay with it. So, yeah, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Though. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I'll see you all later as always. Peace.